today in crypto. The crypto markets are bleeding out once again. I'm going to need to start buying some more uh, bearish shirts if it keeps doing this. Of course, this is testing the resolve of many new cryptocurrency holders and making the mouths water of veteran crypto holders. But while today looks rough, the tough truth is that the next six weeks could be very bumpy, especially if no new stimulus is announced to pump up the market, which is currently running on empty. My name is Lark, and this is where you subscribe for all of the hottest and all of the latest happening out here in the wild, wild land of crypto. Okay, so Bitcoin dipped 3% today, but we are still holding strong above $10,000. In fact, we have not yet returned to test that level. Obviously, it's a super important area of support for Bitcoin. As you can see on this chart, any time that we have dipped below $10,000 in the recent few weeks, there has been very strong demand coming in to buy up that Bitcoin. Bitcoin would have to drop another 10%, by the way, just to test the 200-day moving average of support. So we are still, you know, a ways away from that key line of support. The good news is that we are still holding on to the 20-week moving average as a line of support. This is obviously a very, very key line that investors are watching. Bitcoin is really proving its power in the market right now as well. Because you see, Bitcoin, it's only down around like 18% from recent highs. However, many altcoins, they're down like 60 or 70%. The altcoin market route has been brutal, swift, dramatic, and I think painful for a lot of people. But I do want to give you a bit of perspective. Bitcoin is up 39% since the start of the year. Ethereum is up 141% since the start of the year. And our old boy Chainlink up 364% since the start of the year, even after the massive 60% correction that Chainlink just had. It's still up that much. Sometimes you just need to zoom out a bit and get a bit of perspective on what is actually happening in the market and have that long-term focus as investors because long-term is where the winning is done. Now that you've had your sugar, it is time for some medicine. As you know right now, our fate is sadly tied to the equity markets. The S&P had a nasty day with a big, fat, red candle. Now it did close at a point which is above the level of previous resistance. Now, if we flip that resistance into support, that would mean that Bitcoin would probably get some relief as the equity markets might have a rebound tomorrow. But with the growing fear in the equity markets, a further correction seems quite possible. So watch out for this line to hold or break tomorrow. Now, another 4% drop would bring us down to test the 200-day moving average for the S&P 500, which obviously is a very critical line for it to hold. The good news is that at some point, the Federal Reserve is going to have to step in to prop up the markets again. There's no way they're going to let the whole thing come crashing down without stepping in to pump it back up. The bad news is that it may actually take a much bigger hit than you know testing the 200-day moving average before the stock markets really get some action from the, the stimulators, right? A big thank you to Crypto.com for sponsoring today's episode. There are just two days left to get involved with the massive liquidity farming giveaway on their DeFi swap exchange. Still 2 million CRO to be given out. App users in the USA can now get up to 20% cash back rewards on gift cards for popular shops like Starbucks, Amazon, Home Depot, iTunes, and Olive Garden. Olive Garden, man. And if you still need to get your hands on one of the super popular Crypto.com debit cards, then this market dip is actually a good time to grab one at a slight discount. The Ruby Red card, for example, is less than 150 bucks right now. And of course, with one of these cards, you can get generous cash back rewards, premium lending rates, free Netflix, free Spotify, and much, much more. They are currently shipping to the USA, the UK, and the EU, soon coming back to Australia and hopefully coming to, Australia, uh, to Canada soon as well. And as a special bonus, if you sign up for a card using the link down below in the description, then you're going to get a $50 bonus when you reserve a Ruby Red tier card or higher. Okay, let's, let's dive a little bit deeper into this topic about what's going on with the economy right now. So perhaps the biggest obstacle 
it, to the equity markets having a strong rebound and moving up higher is that the stimulus package that needs to be passed by the U.S. Congress it is increasingly looking like that is unlikely to happen before the election. So we've had basically partisan bickering that's gone on for months with basically zero movement on a bill that should have been passed in like July. And it's not July anymore, in case you haven't noticed. And now that we have the uh, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Gader Bader Ginsburg, who's passed on, we have a new fight over appointing us new Supreme Court Justice. That's probably going to take up the majority of the energy in Washington before the election. So it makes it even more unlikely that a stimulus bill get, will get passed. Now, with this failure to act, economists fear that the U.S. could actually slip into a double-dip recession unless Congress acts quickly. Now, these fears were also echoed by the Treasury Secretary and by the Federal Reserve Chief. So a failure to launch a new stimulus package, it's basically going to mean that it's just going to be so much harder economically. The consumer spending, for example, is going to fall even further, which is going to put more pressure on companies in the stock market that have already seen massive cuts in sales. I mean, this is the big season coming up for a lot of retailers, and they're probably going to have really, really bad years. There is intense pressure to get a bill to pass because the economic data is just, it's grim. It does not look good at all. The USA, which is the world's economic engine, having problems spreads everywhere a new report out states that six percent of small businesses in the usa that closed due to the coronavirus are actually going to be permanently shut that's terrible airline payroll protection programs expire on september 30th and again with no new bill to come in and save them it means that we're looking probably more crisis for u.s airlines so we can see the stocks for those probably continuing to slide down and of course businesses connected to them also taking hits the eviction crisis in the usa could potentially see millions of people kicked out of places to live within the coming months which would be dramatically bad all that stuff just adds fuel to the thesis that october could be a bumpy month for the market so here's here's the simple fact the market is a freaking stimulus junkie and it's starting to get the shakes man it hasn't had a good old solid hit of that good stimulus in a long long time so look this is this is the truth about this year's market rally it's not necessarily pleasant but it's what happened we can really thank the federal reserve and really the aggressive central bank stimulus policies the world over from the usa to japan to the eu and a whole bunch of other countries we can thank those guys for pumping trillions into the markets in the economy thus pumping up the markets to artificial highs now does this mean that bad things are in store for us short term there's a lot of uncertainty in the market. It really doesn't like uncertainty of this, of this degree. As I mentioned earlier this week, October could be a bad month for markets without a stimulus package coming in. But remember too that November and December in election years are good for markets. So we have that to look forward to. And of course, all the big things happening in the crypto market this year, they've not gone away just because the equity markets are looking increasingly shaky. DeFi, it's still here. It's still here. Even though there's been big corrections on a lot of DeFi players, DeFi is still game-changing technology. We've seen an incredible amount of innovation this year, and that innovation hasn't been erased just because we've seen price corrections. NFTs, finally starting to get noticed by the market, actually interesting and useful technology that will continue to grow over time. In fact, Christie's Auction House is now officially in the NFT selling business, which is like super big news. MicroStrategy and Paul Tudor Jones, they bought Bitcoin this year. Let's not forget about that. That actually happened. And while there's a lot of fear around what could happen in the markets over the next six weeks, just remember the big picture. The Federal Reserve is committed to interest rates near 0% and inflation rates over 2% for the next few years. Some analysts are saying that inflation could get as bad as 5 or even 10% in the most extreme situations. The UK Central Bank is considering negative interest rates, which means that's probably going to happen considering they're going into lockdown round two, basically. The EU is continuing its policy of negative rates and stimulus. Bitcoin is going to continue up even if we see some short-term pain. On a fundamental level, 
Bitcoin, it's a screaming buy at these prices. If it dips farther, then it's only a better time to buy. That long-term picture for Bitcoin is looking better than ever. But while there is so much uncertainty in the equity markets, we are going to struggle because of our, our short-term correlation during these periods of volatility. It's not always going to be the case, but it is the case right now. We will likely be on shaky ground until after the U.S. election happens. But after that, it's moon time, baby. Yeah. So, you know, just kind of chill till then. Stack sats, chill, relax. This is what being a, a long-term investor it's what it's all about. Not getting shaken out by these short-term catalysts. You buy and you hold quality for the long term and you're going to be fine. These markets are not even back to their all-time highs. We're going to go to the moon. It's just a question of when. And think about all we've been through. We've been through the China ban, the India FUD, the Bitcoin cash hash war, the brutal bear market, the Ponzi scams, the bubbles, the pumps, the dumps. Bitcoin's been declared dead like a hundred times. We even survived the insanity of the March crash. And that was crazy, man. <laughs> that was crazy. It was a crazy times. Okay, personally, None of the, just, it just, it doesn't matter to me anymore. None of the stuff, it, it doesn't get under my skin, kind of numb to it all. I'm just have this unwavering conviction that my investments are going to make me wildly wealthy in the coming years. I see the trajectory of where this new technology is heading. I'm not interested in the day-to-day -day noise. And if you get overly caught up in the day-to-day -day noise, you're going to get wrecked. Long-term thinking is where it's at. I'm interested in the big game, the big picture. This market is not going to disappear. It's only going to get bigger. In fact, far from being afraid, this is probably the time when you want to consider, you know, selling grandma in the kitchen sink to stack some more sats. <laughs> anyway, those are just my two Satoshis. Your question for today, will the U.S. Congress pass a fresh round of stimulus before the election this year? Let me know if I think that's possible or not down below in the comment section. And of course, We've been talking a lot about the big picture recently, but I do have some great altcoin content coming up for you guys, so do keep an eye out for that over the weekend. Anyway, long live the blockchain, and peace out the next time.